Good morning, folks. Are you ready for some fresh manner? We finished off yesterday saying, yesterday saying that his word in your mouth can move mountains. And I want to give a quick testimony. Last week on Saturday, a friend phoned and um, she said to me, Jilly, please pray for me. I've got these awful glands that are swollen. It looks like mumps, she said, and I'm very, very nervous. She's disabled and she's in a home. So I had been preparing this. And I thought, you know, if we hear the word and we don't do it, I thought I can speak to that and move that mountain. So she said, please pray. So I said, I pray and I speak to those glands that are swollen. Command them to go and I speak healing into your, into your, into your life. And that was it. I did it quite boldly. And on Sunday, the glands were worse. And so she was going to see the doctor on Monday. And on Monday, she woke up and there were no swollen glands. And you know, we need that. We need to realize that the words we speak are powerful. But sadly, the negative words we speak are also powerful. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says this, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those that love it will eat their fruit, eat its fruit. The Passion Translation says, Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life, and the talkative person will reap the consequences. <laughs> you know, there's so much information in the world today. We're constantly being bombarded with words, words, words. And I think we need to just be really careful because it's hard to discern whether these words are genuine, whether these words are true. So often we get stuff on our phones that is like total fake news and we need to be really careful. You know, when Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, and I mean, they were the religious people of the day, he said to them, you belong to your father, the devil. By the way, this is in John um, 8.44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. That's why we need the armor of God every day. We put on the shoes of the, of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation which protects our minds, the the, the God, what is, what's it, the breastplate of righteousness which shows us that we are righteous. But over it all, and the most important, is the belt which holds everything together. And that's the belt of truth, and God's word is truth. And then, of course, we have a sword, and that is the word of God. And, of course, the shield of faith, which quenches the fiery darts of the evil one. Because, you know, the evil one is still speaking. He does what he did in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say Oh, do you think you're righteous? You're a fraud. God loves you? I doubt it. I mean, highly favored and deeply loved? I don't feel like that. And so we listen to the words that Satan speaks to us instead of listening to the, to the word of God. And what did Jesus say when Satan spoke to him? He said, it is written. And that's what we need to do. In Matthew 24 and verse 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. When we're dealing with God and when we're dealing with his word, we are dealing with eternity. We're not dealing with this life, with this world. So let's absolutely have a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. Always remember, you're highly favored and deeply loved.